The lake house didn't do anything to you. Have some respect. <laughs> So, in the last 365 days, I realised that I've gained 74,000 new subscribers. And what should I do with this platform? What kind of use can I be to the world? And I realised that why, while I have some very large acts to grind, I also have some really tiny axes to grind. One of them being my fervent defence of the much hated film, The Lake House. Now, first off, I can say with some confidence, that the lake house didn't do anything to you. It hasn't killed anybody, it hasn't hurt anyone. All it's done is done a very fluid, small scale time travel love story that gives me hope for humanity and something to watch when I'm really ill, okay? Okay. I mean, this film has the late Captain Von Trapp in it. Have some respect. Do the timelines between the woman who lives in 2006 and the man who lives in 2004 always perfectly align? No. Does it contain the most absurd, perfect super zoom that makes you lose my shit every single time? Yes. The Lake House is a film about a woman called Kate who lived in a kind of glass house on stilts in the middle of a lake. She moves out, she leaves a note in the magical letterbox that's like, please forward my mail. And then Alex sends her a letter back in the magic post box and is like, mom, you must be mistaken. It's 2004 and nobody's lived in this house for years. She's like, mate, it's 2006. They have a letter argument, which develops into a friendship, which develops into a romance. Perfection ensues. Time out said, the lake house demands a serious suspension of disbelief, but if you accept it as a bit of romantic nonsense, it has its pleasures. And if we know from my Mamma Mia video, I have very strong feelings about the suspension of disbelief being celebrated in films directly marketed at men. I don't know why I went men, like men don't, do men exist? We'll call them male movies versus those marketed at women female movies. Women's films. The timeline thing, while I noticed it doesn't really bother me because the sense of the film is that the timings and truths of what's going on is changing as we go and I'm not going to go into a big butterfly effect well of absurdity but I did like this blog that said it's a time travel story that works on emotional not temporal logic. So I wanted to see if by watching it back I could pull out for you what I really liked about the film. So if you feel like actually watching it and giving it a chance, you might see what there is to love. Okay, so bear with. He's a builder slash frustrated architect whose father is a famous architect and can build these incredibly strong structures but whose body is failing him. She is a doctor who specializes in the architecture of bodies but struggles to find any real physical home. This, my friends, is a film about property versus connection. They're never owned by each other. Whenever any of the characters asks wh whether they're single, they're always like, yeah, I guess I am, but it's complicated. I'm writing to a hot girl in 2006. <laughs> Loads of the shots in the film are really clever. A lot of them are shot from above, like you're looking down at a house plan. And it kind of feels like it's about what it's like to live on ground level of the pl grand plans we set for ourselves and the ways we try to control what's happening when really the architecture of time is controlling us. Is this a stretch? It feels like a stretch. But what can I say? I have an English degree and this is the only way I can think of to make it feel worthwhile. Another thing I love about the film is the pacing. So many films that are made nowadays really just try and hold your attention, often superficially by making twists that don't make sense or just lots of kind of really sharp, choppy editing. And this film trusts you to keep your attention. It trusts you to stay around if you want to know what's going on. It's so slow, which is why it's the perfect I'm sick on the sofa film. But it also just feels really real. Like all of the characters' worlds feel very full and there's loads of details that make you feel like there's a beefy backstory there and they're not just like archetypal people being plopped in storylines. There's also loads of references to books. Her mum reads Crime and Punishment to, to connect to her dead husband and the couple in turn use the parallels of the book Persuasion um, about waiting uh, and getting a second chance at 
love. I also think making the lake house a central character is not insignificant. The lake house, it said like defies other designs of lake houses because there's no steps to the water. It's this shouldn't be possible, shouldn't be comfortable <laughs> structure that just kind of floats above the water. And in that way, is it kind of like defying what we think the architecture of the body can do? Walking on water is famously um, actually and also symbolically, biblically, impossible but it is the architecture of man that makes something impossible possible living in the lake house is walking on water it's doing what doesn't quite make sense and what doesn't quite match up which now makes me think maybe the inconsistencies in the timeline are on purpose because we're not supposed to be in control of the story we're not supposed to understand how this is possible <sighs> Or maybe we go with my original theory, which is that the dog is running it all. In summary, whether that convinced you to watch The Lake House or not, or at least stop laying into it, it's like it's some kind of easy target. It made me feel better. I feel like there is a weight off my chest. And I found this quote from a website called Cine Passion that says, it is a satisfyingly sarcastic free ode to the flickering absurdity of romance. And I would agree with that. This film isn't pretending to be anything it's not. It's not trying to do anything big. It's trying to do a small thing well. And shouldn't we applaud that in the arts sometimes? Why does everything have to be like the last thing we saw, like the thing that makes us comfortable, like the thing we want it to be. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please tell me in the comments if there's a film that you love that everybody else hates. Take this moment to rush to its defence. If you like being here and you think you might want to be here again, the subscribe button is down there. Let's see if YouTube can guess what you like. YouTube thinks you'll like this video. YouTube also thinks you might like this video. All these videos, are they right? Let's find out. Click it, click it, click it, click it. Okay, frog's not out.